Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we got the chat up and running. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is a little early. This is five minutes earlier than the time that I set. But I started early because I'm not going to make the same mistake of starting and stopping and making a new stream. So I'm just going to wait on you guys to come and join. Uh, again, if you have subscribed to my channel, you should be able to chat with me. So if you are joining from anywhere in the world to pray for our dear beloved brother, Pastor Giovanni Amato, we're here today together to stand with him and his family and to proclaim the word of the Lord. I have a short message to share with you all today about healing, particularly for our brother, but I think it's applicable to all that may join today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your power of your almighty Holy Spirit, Lord, that dwells with us. Hallelujah. You are truly our Emmanuel, God with us. As soon as you join, and again, if you are not subscribed to Pour Out Your Spirit, please subscribe. Click that notification bell, and whenever I go live, you'll get notified. Or whenever I upload a new video, as I did today, you can see it and uh, know that there's something for you to watch to be encouraged by. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so my message I'm going to bring in a minute that should just take about 10 minutes, even less, before we begin praying at 10 for our beloved brother in the Lord, is how ought we to approach God in praying for our brother? And it's just a couple of scriptures that the Lord spoke to my heart, and they kind of work together in unison. And it is also considering what God's heart is toward us regarding healing. Now we know it's not the first time that a believing man or woman of God has gotten sick, but we're going to look at some things. Should we remain in sickness as believers? So we're going to think about that. We're going to talk about God's word. We reflect on God's word. And we bring back to him when we pray the word of the Lord. So every time we pray, we pray the word. Because the word is God's will. And God said that when you pray according to his will, he answers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we're looking for... God to be with us today, more than anyone else who joins, we need the Lord with us today so that he can um, move on behalf of our dear brother. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We thank you. We praise your mighty name. We welcome you here today, Lord. We welcome your presence, O God to cheer and to guide us, O God, to guide us into the kind of prayer, the kind of prayers that are effective, God. The kind of prayers that are life-changing. The kind of prayers that move the hand of God. Because we as your people, you said in your word that the effectual or fervent prayer of a righteous man and woman, I believe, availeth much. So the believers that are out there were made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Completely clean, whole in the sight of God. That the Lord, the holy, holy God of all. Almighty God can look upon us now because we are covered and cleansed by the blood of Jesus and he's removed our sin from as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah. So we can come to his presence with confidence today. We can come with confidence and pray for our brother. And also I pray that this will be an encouragement to you if any of you are struggling with sickness that God is a God who heals. He is still the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the word says. And as he healed before, he'll heal again. We're trusting him today. All right, praise the Lord. We're about to start in one minute. So again, for those of you that may just be joining me, if you are subscribed to my channel, I believe you can join in the uh, chat. So please uh, type in a message that you're here or that you're believing for God to do this miracle in particular and heal our brother. 
and we're praying that that manifestation would come soon and very soon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So drop a message in the chat if you're here. Let me know you're here. And together we will pray and we will believe for a miracle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so 950. I'm going to begin a short word, beloved. If you are joining me now, at any time you can drop a note in the chat. Otherwise, just... Uh, Listen, and this is something, as I said a little earlier, that I believe the Lord put on my heart to share today, a direction for a prayer and an understanding about who God is and how he feels about healing us, in particular our dear brother who we are coming together to pray for. All right, so the message is called, How Ought We to Approach God in Praying for Our Brother? Psalm 94, verse 9 says, He who planted the ear shall he not hear he who formed the eye hallelujah shall he not see so we know that god who made us and gave us eyes and gave us ears also has eyes to see and he sees us gathered here today by faith for our brother he has ears to hear his ears are not stopped to us he can hear he created our ears and he has ears to hear us today so we thank you lord that you are present with us and you are hearing us this day. Hallelujah. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I know many of you know this verse. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, beloved, we come today knowing that God is, that he exists. He is our creator. He is our redeemer. He is our Lord and Savior. He is real. We acknowledge his presence here, even before we pray. And we know that he rewards diligence. So let's consider for a minute that word diligence. God is looking for diligence from us tonight. So Jesus told a story to illustrate this, and it is in it is found in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. So if you have your Bibles and you'd like to turn, I'm going to read from my Bible today. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. It begins in verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Beloved, do not lose heart if my dear... Cousin Dallas is on, my cousin Rose, my other cousins, do, let, we are not losing heart, saying there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. Verse 4, And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, verse 5, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Verse 6, then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? The type of faith that our Lord is looking for now in these last days is the faith of the widow, the little widow woman who would not hear no for an answer. And that's how we're going to approach the Lord tonight. We will not hear no for an answer, Lord, because we believe your word, and in your word it says, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So in the this text, we have the woman's, the person who's troubling the woman to whom she comes to the judge to get relief from is called her adversary. Well, our adversary, Pastor Giovanni's adversary, is Satan. Satan, that word, means adversary in Hebrew. Jesus describes Satan in John 10.10 10, as the thief who does not come except to steal, 
to kill and to destroy. But Jesus promises in that same text saying, I have come, hallelujah, that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So today we come to speak that life that Jesus promised to my dear cousin John, even now, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Abundant life we speak over his, his life, hallelujah. What my dear cousin, the man of God, is dealing with is a theft of his health. It's a theft of much time in which he could be doing the will of God for his life. His wife, his close friends and family have also suffered this theft at the hands of their adversary. So we come tonight by faith and we come to get justice from not an unjust judge today, beloved, but from the just judge. Hallelujah. The wonderful judge of all that judges both heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Someone who may have wandered onto this live stream or this video recording may have within them the false teaching of believing that God is okay with sickness. I don't believe that, beloved. I believe that that is a lie from the pit of hell. Settling for whatever state we find ourselves in after we've been attacked by the enemy is not the will of God for my life, beloved, and I don't believe it's the will of God for your life either. Although there are times where God will use the sickness we may find ourselves in for our good, or as in the case of Job, for a purpose. According to Paul's declarations in Romans 8, verse 28, and we know that all things, God is working all things together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. These, I believe, mainly fall into God's permissive will and not his perfect will. This is why, beloved, he instructs us in our prayer the focus of our prayer to the lord thy kingdom come and thy will be done because we know looking at this earth not only the will of god and the kingdom of god is done and brought upon this earth hallelujah i want to share three scriptures with you in particular now to close before we pray that show the heart of god toward us in regard to healing and health so the first one is James 1, 17. And this gives us a portrait of who God is. And this text says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Hallelujah. Think of that. God is the Father of light without shadow. He is perfect light, and in the presence of perfect light, there is no space anywhere around it for shadow. There's no darkness to it. God's will never changes toward us, beloved. It never changes toward my dear cousin, the man of God, Pastor Giovanni. Never changes. He never changes his mind and decides that he wants evil for us. He never changes his mind and decides that he wants sickness for us death for us what does the what does the word say jesus said i have come that you might have life and life more abundantly even better than you had before i came jesus is saying to us hallelujah another verse of scripture that shows god's heart concerning sickness and the believer is found in and we mentioned this one last night psalm 103 Verses 1 through 5 in particular, which says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, hallelujah, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Verse 4, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Think of that, verse 3. He forgives all of our sins, all of our iniquities, and he promises here in verse 3, who heals, does it say some of your diseases? 
Does it say some diseases when you are a certain age, like when you are younger? No, it says here that he heals all of your diseases. Hallelujah. And here, verse 4, who redeems your life from destruction. Today we bring before the Lord our dear brother, Pastor John, believing that he will redeem his life from the destruction that Satan envisioned for him. For we know that God has a different vision of John's life. And we believe by faith it is to go on and proclaim the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Finally, I'd like to turn our attention to Isaiah 53, verse 5. Many of you know it. 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. And I love how in First Peter, Peter quotes that, but he changes it to by his stripes we were healed. Because by then Christ had already uh, hung on the cross and before that he was already uh, scourged with the whip. So he already received the stripes. So Isaiah is looking forward and he says, by your stripes we are healed. And Peter is looking back and saying, by your stripes we were healed. So we're proclaiming for our brother today that he was healed and we're thanking God for the very soon manifestation. So now at 10.01, let's get started on prayer. Before we begin, if anybody is on and want to type a message into the chat box, say we're here, we're ready to pray, we're believing God. Praise the Lord. Let's get started. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your word. You, O oh God, who made the eyes have eyes. You who made ears have ears. Father God, we know that you see us even now as we come before you in faith for our brother, Lord. Father God, you see us with your eyes, O oh God. Hello, Lord. Here we are, standing in the need of prayer, Lord, for our brother, Lord. We're here, Lord God, by faith. We're here ready to receive for him, O oh God, and ready for this battle to end, O oh God. We proclaim its finish, we proclaim its win in your mighty name, Jesus, because you have already done it. You've done the heavy lifting, Lord. You've already done the work, O oh God, that our brother could be completely healed and whole, standing up on his own two feet. Hallelujah. Fill with your spirit to minister more the gospel of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, Father, in these last days. Hallelujah. You who have ears, hear us, O God. We trust that you hear us. Father, you are not as the unjust judge. Father God, you are the just judge of all the earth and heaven as well. Lord, you judge all. And Father, you hear our cry. And you see the blood upon us, O God, of your holy Son, Jesus, that we are your own, O God, that we belong to you. When you look at us, you see Christ, for we are his body, Lord. And we come to you in the authority of Jesus. And we thank you for the healing that you promised us, particularly the healing that you promised our dear brother, Pastor John, even now, Lord. Father God, come upon his body now in Jesus' name and bring the healing that we have so long prayed for, Lord. Lord, we're waiting on you, Lord God, for that manifestation, but we trust you will do it, Lord. Surely, surely, surely you will do it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we know that you are here. We know that you reward diligence. So we're going to keep coming back, Lord, until we see our faith be sight, Lord God. Until we see him completely whole, completely healed, completely functioning, O God, in the authority of a son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory, glory to your name, Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we know that you will work even this thing together for his good. Father God, that this test has become a testimony. Father God, that this trial will make him triumphant, Lord. Father God, that he will have a word to say that will that will be an infectious in the good way, Lord God. Uh, Father God, we, I pray even now for a stream of healing to flow from this. Father God, that as he is raised back to strength and health, that, Father God, that you would grant him the gift of healing, Lord God. That, Father God, he would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. And that promise, Lord, you gave to all of us, Lord God. 
you gave to every disciple, to every follower of Jesus Christ, to everyone to whom you have uh, laid upon us this great commission, O God, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in this world, O God, that is quickly, quickly, quickly coming to an end. Father God, Father, in these last days, grant that you would give back to us in full measure our brother, O God, even better than he was, O God, stronger than he was, more healthy than he's ever been in a very, very long time. And Father, Lord, maybe the healthiest, even so, the healthiest he's ever been in his life. Father, we ask big, for you are a big God. Father, you are the God that hears us. You are the God that sees us. And we come to you today knowing that you do. And Father, we are going to be like that widow. And we're going to keep coming back to you, Lord, until we see this very thing that we ask for that is according to your will. Lord, for you are the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness of turning. Father, you chase darkness away. You don't welcome it. You heal the sick. Jesus said, it says of the of Jesus in the word that he healed all manner of sickness. And we thank you, Lord, that he has never changed. He hasn't weakened. His Holy Spirit has not weakened. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in our brother John, this beloved man of God. Father God, I thank you for all the voices of those that love him that are now crying out to you together. Hear our voices, Lord. See, see us here before you, Lord. For our dear brother, we thank you that we will soon see the manifestation of this healing, complete health and restoration in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you and we thank you. Father God, we, as I said yesterday, are not as those that have to wait to have the thing to say thank you, but we say thank you by faith. Father God, I see him now walking on his own two feet. I see him opening the door and walking out of that, that sick place. Father God, by faith, you will make this so, for we trust you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for it now, Lord. We thank you for it now, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Beloved family of God, if you still feel the need to keep praying, don't let me stop you. Keep interceding for our dear brother. Intercede for yourself, for those in your life. God wants to hear our prayers. He wants prayer to become a part of our lives, but we're always talking to him. When we come in, when we leave our house, we go to work, whatever we're doing, he wants to hear you, beloved. And he is there to move on your behalf and be mighty, for he is the Almighty. We thank him today, and I thank you for joining with me today, and those that love our beloved Pastor John, Pastor Giovanni, we thank God for his life, and we thank God that he will soon do these things that we ask for, for we do ask by faith. God bless you. I probably won't be, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So if you can't see the text, Jesus for me says, Lord, I plead the precious blood over this time of prayer for Pastor Giovanni Amato, thank you, Lord, that every power, hallelujah, and principality is bound and taken down over this time of intercession. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, again, beloved, if you feel to keep praying for him, don't let me stop you. Keep praying. Don't only have to pray at this time. I just really felt that the Lord to reach out to my cousins and suggest this time. And uh, I probably won't be doing it live uh, anymore for a while, but I'm still going to be praying 10 o'clock my time in New York City. It's 7 o'clock in Arizona. I'm going to keep praying at this time. Check your time zone so you're praying with us. And God is hearing our voices and he's seeing us here all at the same time for our dear brother. And he will truly move. I believe that on our behalf as he showed me that if we commit to this we're going to see a miracle and maybe this will set a precedent beloved that when we have someone we love that's in a desperate situation that we are going to believe the lord and not the report that we've heard from a doctor or not the report that we've heard from um from anyone who has something negative to say so we're going to stand on the word of the lord 
Praise the Lord. God bless you all. And again, if you feel to keep praying, if you feel to pray at a different time during the day, if the Holy Spirit puts someone in his family, like his dear wife, or some of the family members that are with him day in and day out and are trying to encourage him, if you are nearby and you're able to uh, you know, send the word, encourage him and, and his family, praise the Lord. Thank you for, for your obedience to the Lord, and I know it's a blessing to them and to him as well. So once again, thank you. Keep praying. God bless you. And... Uh, See you soon. God bless.